How did this independent hip hop artist go from blowing hundreds and thousands of dollars on beats and wasting time relying on producers to now being able to fully produce his own music in just over two months? So I wanna tell you guys the story of Ryan B and the best way I'm gonna tell you the story is I actually did an interview with him, but essentially, Here's what happened. He came into the program, had no music production experience, does not know how to play an instrument, doesn't have fancy equipment. He has a computer, microphone, headphones, that's pretty much it. How did he go? And he used to waste, he used to buy beats on BeatStars, go to the studio, pay for recording time, all that bullshit. How did he go from doing what 99% of artists do and wasting their money and wasting their time relying on producers to now he's been in the program about 10, 11 weeks. He's made over 30 beats and he's already finished recording and mixing his first self-produced song, he's about to start mastering it. He's already writing new lyrics for new songs as well. He's never gonna have to spend money on beats again. He's never gonna have to go to a studio, pay for studio time, pay for mixing mastering, and wait for people to produce his music. He can do it all himself. So what I'm gonna do is take you to the computer. We're gonna watch the interview of me and Ryan B where we talk about the entire story and how you can get started on the exact same path as him. Let's go. All right, Ryan B, we got you in here. Yeah. Star studded student. <laughs> hey. Uh thanks for your time. Absolutely, Lizzy. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Um, so man, I mean, kind of just jumping right in, bro. Um, tell us the people watching this, me, whatever, tell us where you were. Like, honestly, bro, take us through your journey. You have a really interesting journey. I want to hear it. So tell yeah. the people the story. Nah, totally, man. So I mean, the short and the long of it is uh, 34 years old, about to be 35 in November. Um, started, you know, freestyling, all that type of stuff, 14, 15 years old, fell in love with hip hop music. By 18, this was like, this is what I want to do. Started, you know, making songs with local producers in my area, started doing shows, building up a little bit of a following, started doing, you know, opening up for larger artists, you know, like uh, mm. KRS-One, People Under the Stairs, The Cool Kids, um, you know, almost got signed to bone thugs and harmonies new label that they were going to do then that oh, fell cool. apart like okay. sign signed to an independent label that then got funny with the money and you know and then it just started to kind of do everything myself but i didn't know how to do all any of the stuff i didn't know how to make beats i didn't so i'm still pulling and still working with engineers and i'm trying to make uh, an album that uh you know, went through all the slew of stuff, you know, where it's like producers just disappear, uh, working with an engineer who we were like 60 way, 60% way through the album. And then, you know, the dude falls off the face of the planet and, you know, relapses on drugs and, you know, loses his hard drive with all my stuff on it and had to restart that whole thing. Whoa. And, you know, spending thousands of dollars throughout all of this, um, and ending up, you know, like making this album for four hours that, you know, I lose all my momentum just in general of things that I had going on when I was younger. And I released this project back in, God, I was 28. So, you know, what is that? Six. Yeah. Yeah. Six, seven years ago. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. fully just, it, it just flops, man. And, and I'm totally crushed, totally crushed. Like it was my, my music dream in terms of, you know, this is like, oh man, I'm going to make it, da, 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 you know, from 18 to 28, 10 years of just all go, all go like number one, like plan A, plan B, plan C, you know, was working jobs, you know, as a manager of a high end butcher shop, you know, like random things just to make enough money to keep doing this. And at that point, man, I pretty much like gave up on all of that and, and shifted away from having that be my dream. And it's like, I kind of had to, you know, be an adult and, and, you know, get a job and, you know, uh, uh, the universe has got a funny way of, of having things happen, man. I mean, I couldn't stay away for too long. Um, I started, uh, took like a full year off and then I just started, you know, writing lyrics here and there, you know, kind of making, I didn't record anything, but I'm just, you know, I'm finding beats that I like on beat stars and buying them and making, writing songs and kind of building up this vault. Um, and, you know, at, at some point, I, uh, my journey ended up, uh, 
it's funny again funny how the universe works you know like i try to get away from music then i end up working for one of the biggest you know music companies in terms of like microphone hardware uh and, you know, ended up linking up with the guy who's like, hey, man, you got to get back in this, you know, we got to get you back in the studio. And, you know, so I start recording some music, but there's always been this thing of like, you know, I, I've wanted to, I've tried to do it all myself and it can be very, very stressful when you don't know what you're doing, you know, like you're adding so much undue stress which i think is why a lot of artists including myself is just like okay offload you know buy the beats here get this engineer and then it's all more about a money game but you know i've always wanted to like understand all the other aspects of it and legitimately you know i started recording songs which i haven't released any of them yet but i have like 30 uh but then uh i come across you on a random instagram ad dude just Crazy. straight up random and uh you know, I was like, shit, like make beats, like mix, master, 90 days, rapid fire. Like, and I just <laughs> typed in, I just typed in rapid just to see, you know, and uh we wow. set up a call and and I mean, man, it's just uh for what I I mean, like something that was like tucked away, you know, as like a uh like this would be really nice to be able to do this, but man, it's way too hard. I have no idea. Um, all of a sudden that became like, okay, this is a possibility, man. And, uh, and I gotta say like, just choosing to make that investment has been, I've said this to you before, but it's been the greatest music investment that I've ever made from not only from a, I mean, actually from the most important standpoint, from a straight up, like me as a creative, like me as like, I need to get things out and music is legitimately just a part of my soul as corny as that can sound to some uh, people, but people all. who get it, get it, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, not only is it from a lyric standpoint now, but it's like, shoot, dude, I can make, a, I could cook up a beat in 20 minutes and with a whole different vibe than the last beat that I just cooked up and tap into a different part of lyricism, a different part of song making, you know, and start messing around with all this stuff. And it's just been, it's just been incredible, man. So that's, that, that is, that's my journey. You know, that's, that's, that's awesome. Here. Yeah. Dude, that's great. Uh, uh, that was sick, dude. That was epic, <laughs> man. I uh, took a couple of things away. I mean, so first, first of all, before I forget, when's your birthday? November 10th. Okay, did we already talk about this? My birthday is no. November 20th. Oh, sheesh. Okay, <laughs> Scorpio's in the house. So yeah. funny. Like, I'm like literally not surprised at all that we yeah. are so similar now. Yeah. Uh, I'm putting it in my calendar here on my on my phone. Yeah, me so, too. So a couple of things that, uh, God, there's so many things that I resonated with in terms of your story. Uh, one of them was the album thing. Because yeah. I had an album um, probably eight years ago for me when I was in college. And um, I worked with an awesome engineer producer. Like I bought beats, but I would go to his place and record. He was fine. Like he was he was awesome. Yeah. Charged me a good rate, 35 bucks an hour. It was like fine. Yeah. I ended up spending like two grand on the whole album, which at the time for me was like, that's a lot. A lot. Yeah. Uh, even now, like two grand on an album, you know. And no promo like i didn't know how right i thought oh you know what the algorithm gods will be in my favor my friends will spread it out and some a and r from a label will hit me up and i'll be yeah. off yeah you know what boom, i mean boom, yeah and like literally i put the album out a week later i was like damn this shit fucking flops like i just i could feel it i was like this isn't going anywhere like i don't even know what to do right now like i posted it on my socials and you could chalk it up to bad marketing but I, I my brain went didn't go that way it did kind of but my brain went yes i definitely need to market my music better but the other part of it was like god it would have been really cool if i had just like spent no money on this like it would have been dope if i not to discount the producer it was more of like god if i could just done this all myself and it flopped it wouldn't feel as bad because like at least i just banged it out and had fun making the music so um that resonated with me. What, what do you feel like when an artist, I mean, why, let, let me ask you, I mean, people hear it from me, mm -hmm. right? I'm the one selling. So of course I'm going to talk about why people should do this, but yeah. why, why do you think people, artists who are 
independent hip hop artists? Why should they go from just being a songwriter to then taking on the whole process? I mean, something that I recently saw um, that actually totally translated over was, you know, a buddy of mine posts this, he posts this reel on his Instagram story and it was about the NBA and it was about like the number of players that have been in the NBA in the history of the NBA. And it okay. was like, and talking every single person, star players, as well as the people just riding the bench their whole career and not really playing all that often. It was like 5,300 something people. That's not a lot. No. I think NBA's, how long has the NBA been around? Actually? I mean, it's, uh, gosh, at least, I mean, I want to say at least. I was going to say I mean, 50 or 70 years something. or something. Yeah. So you, you think about that and you think about how many kids start out their journey about like, that's where I'm going. And when you actually look at that math, you're like, the percentage of people that actually make it there are infant. I mean, it's infinitesimal. It's like nothing, you know? Um, and so it was this mm -hmm. whole thing of like, Hey, you, we also need to like, we need to be realistic with our kids. You know, that was like the overall message that this guy was trying to share. Um, but it made me think about music and it made me think about just like, I mean, literally like when you look at the road and you look at the the artists that make it, I mean, that road is paved with the broken dreams of millions, you know? Yeah. Um, and then you also, the basketball analogy, it's just like the greatest players of all time had it all, you know, they weren't just a good shooter. They weren't just like, they were good at defense. They were good, you know? So it's this whole idea of like, okay, what are the pieces that make something incredible you know um and then you know you take a look at like in our field you know someone like kanye west who it's like yeah man he was a producer first and foremost you know him himself he'll admit it, he wasn't the best writer so he like worked and collaborated but he basically built up all the pieces you know um and it's like you can do one thing like you could be like the guy that shoots the three-point shots and that's it but like, if you're more well-rounded in the whole thing, like you have a greater chance of actually getting into the big leagues. It's just the way that I see it from a standpoint of like, um, you know, I don't know, kicking the can around and trying to figure out like something that's hyper-focused and getting extremely good at that, which still in the end of the day, you could be the best rapper on the planet. And it's just like, yeah, sometimes man, like the, the algorithm gods just aren't on your side. But it's like, if you can do it all, it's not just this one path that could get you there. Like, I always think about songwriters too, you know, like Bruno Mars was a songwriter before he became an artist. And it's like, it's just like, that was his path, you know, like he probably, when he was a kid, he was like, oh man, I'm just gonna be the best singer on the planet. And then he started writing songs for other people, making some money and was able to fucking build all this stuff up, get to a point where it's just like, okay, like I can actually do this now. I got the connections and it's like, so in my mind, it's almost like, like, yeah, man, you can be stubborn. Like I was maybe at some point, I've always been pretty open, but it's just, it's never been a time where like the way that you have, have, have taught me to do all this stuff. Like it is, you said like, man, part of you is going to be mad. Cause it's like the tools that are available to us th these days, make it easy to, in order to do it. Like it still requires creativity and all that stuff, but it's just, like, that's the main thing I would say is it's like, yeah, man, you could just be a rapper, but like, why not go in and try and do all the other stuff too? And, and if anything, if like, ah, oh, man, that's just not my cup of tea, you know, it's like the ability to have like a, a higher level conversation with the engineer or with the producer makes all the difference too. So it's like, again, in the long run, man, like this has been the greatest investment because i mean for me i'm going to be just like cooking up on my own shit now but if i ever like work with other people it's just like oh i mean just earlier today i was listening to a, a, a songwriter friend of mine who she makes completely different music but i'm reaching out to them later today and i'm going to be like hey i want to sample this like i want to speed up this and i want to <laughs> and turn this into a fucking hip-hop track you know and it's like i can actually do that now right. like you know like Eight weeks ago, I had no idea how to do that. So it's just like, and like, that's crazy. Like, I would have just listened to that song and been like, dope, like, congrats on the new song. But now I'm like, no, nah, like, send, shoot me the stems. Like, I'll give you guys all the credit and we'll do all the splits, but I want to turn this into a hip hop track, you know? 
And yeah. I'm like, how cool is that? So, That's sick, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I love one of the uh, the things you said in Slack yeah. where you were like, you were like, I have this giddy feeling like a 13 year old again. I like yeah. just when you were talking and you were laughing about how you, yeah. I, I totally, I, I felt that. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, dude. And I mean, and that's it, you know, it's like for anyone who's listening to this, it's just like, just think of like, I don't know, zoom out and look at it from that standpoint, you know, of like, if you have more skills in your arsenal, like you have a greater chance of actually making it. And like, that is a hard truth that like pretty much the majority of us like will not like we still haven't made it yet, you know, no, fully. So close. it's just, yeah. So it's just, it's boom, you know, like right yeah, there, yeah. like set yourself up for better success. You know, if you want to go out of that route, you know, I agree with you. I mean, the, the analogy I always say and the stuff I talk about in some of my YouTube content is like, there's two routes, A and B. A has yeah. got 99% of the failures and B has got the 1%. So I equate it to like, if you want to accomplish, and I say 1% as like the bar I set for that is <clears throat> you're making a uh, full-time income from just music. So I kind of like make it a realistic, like if you can live, buy a car, groceries, rent, all that stuff with just music and have extra. And it's just for music to me. I'm like, that's to me, that's kind of the 1% I set. Absolutely. Then you've got like, see, when people say 1%, they immediately think Drake. I'm like, yep. no, Drake's not 1%. He's 0.00. No, totally. 0.00001%. So I'm talking about 1%, but that's still small. Um, It's still really small. And so my lesson is if you want to get what the 1% get, you got to do what the 1% do. Straight and up. most people are not willing to, you know, sit there and try to make beats and, and mix and master. But, you know, let me ask you this. The thing that I feel like is, there's limiting beliefs around making music, like producing, totally. making beats, mixing, mastering. Let's talk about those. Cause you, maybe you went through those. Like what were some of the limiting beliefs you went through before yeah. joining and before committing to producing your own music? Well, oh, man, I mean, it was just like, I, this is too complicated. I can't do this, you know? And <laughs> right. like, that was like the, the, the big one, you know, of just like, um, cause I mean, Dude, at, at, at some point it was, you know, if we were talking like when I first started trying to make music, it's just like, man, at 18 years old, uh, back in, yeah, like 2006, 2007, it's just like, well, people were still cranking out all sorts of stuff, but it's just like, you had to like really go in on like how to do that. Like me opening up logic or whatever pro tools or something, you know, fruity loops being like, i pressing some buttons and not knowing. So it's just, you know, you just, I just wrote it off. And I mm -hmm. think, I think it's like, you know, um, and then I think it, a lot of that also comes into, it's like you, then your ego kicks in because we all have mm -hmm. an ego that tries to protect us and tries to like, like, okay, well, man, I'm just going to become the best rapper then, you know? And it's just like, and then you kind of don't ever, you don't ever really look at this anymore. Like, this is just over here. You've already like written that off as like a possible path for you, which, you know, closing off that aspect of yourself can do one of two things. Sometimes, I mean, I'm sure there's stories where, and this is always a thing too. I'm sure there's stories where that like creates the best person, you know, I shut all the doors and I'm just this one path. But more often than not, like that is truly like the 0.0001% that that happens to. We're not even talking 1%. We're talking way less than that, where it's the idea of being open to the possibility is what kind of smashed that limiting belief in me, where it's like, again, something that I've always said for myself, um, and I try to live by this is like, I am open to having, if I can get into some new information and some fundamental beliefs that I have about my world, if I get new information that like alters that, like I'm down, dude, I roll with it. Like I am unafraid to be like, all right, yeah, cool. I've thought this for 34 years, but not anymore, you know, mm -hmm. but that's, that takes practice, you know, it takes practice of kind of like opening yourself up to that, which I think dude, in the end of the day, if I'm just being real, like, I think a lot of people, it's not that they don't know how to do that, but it's just, it's a, 
they don't want to. Um, and I think it's like, man, the ego is a powerful, powerful thing, man. People get butthurt about stuff. People get stubborn. People like start just being a hater rather than like understanding that they may not know. I mean, the older I get, the more I realize I don't know. It's like, yeah, I know a lot about a lot of things, but I don't know fucking everything, you know? Yeah. And so it's just like that. I don't know. To me, that limiting belief all that type of stuff. And then the other things like, oh, it costs too much money or it costs this or like, oh, I have to do, I have to learn all this music theory before I do it. Like all of it is just this whole thing at the core of it is like, oh man, that's just too much, you know? And so like being open, it's when I found your content, it was just like, boom, like, okay, this is like, I, I want to see what this is, you know? Um and then the other part of it too, it's just like the investment made. I was like, look, man, I, I've spent this and 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 way more throughout my music career and gotten ultimately way less than I ultimately got, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I said, like, I'm going to chalk it up to, even if this is, even if Lizzie's actually lying to me, it's not going to be like the worst thing, <laughs> but it's not, it hasn't it's happened funny. that way. You know? Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I've at least not completely lied to you. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. So, so interesting. I'm, I'm just taking mental notes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The money thing is a big one because yeah. so I chalk it up to like, so the, the, I'll share this with you. Tell me what you think. Like I, I look at it like um, the way I look at it. Right. Okay. So we're making music. We're rappers, whatever. Yeah. We're trying to put these songs out and we want to be big. We want to make it full time. Yada, yada. Okay. So first off, can we own the music? Do we own the rights to what we're putting out? Let's start there. Well, if you're buying a 20, 30, 40 dollar fucking beat lease on BeatStars, you're not owning the rights. And you're also other people are rapping on that track, yeah. which means you know, I I'm a very dirty person. I use the analogy that means other people are having sex with your wife. Yeah. Your special song that you have that is your song, other people have gone and ran through that song. Yeah. So, first of all, why would you want to go into your music with that? And then the stream cap, you can get up to 50,000. I don't even know why the fuck producers do that, dude. That's it one of the- It doesn't make any sense. It's yeah. just like real estate agents putting their face on a fucking park bench thinking yeah. that that does anything just because yeah. everyone else does it. So producers who do that, it's stupid as shit. But yeah. then it's like, as an artist, you go into your music, like having a cap on your success. Why would you want to do that? And then the next thing is like, hey, let's say we want to own the music and it's exclusive rights and unlimited. I'm the only one who's gotten this beat. How much does a beat like that cost? 500 bucks, 300 yeah. if the guy yeah. plugs you. So then, okay, cool. How about mixing, mastering? It's like, you're my homie does it for, for the low. Your homie probably sucks. Yeah. And then, oh, well, I'm doing it myself. You probably suck because you've just looked at YouTube. Yeah. Oh, well, um, I, I have a guy who does it for, for 50. It's like, cool, he probably sucks. Okay, I have a guy who does it pro, but he, he charges me 200 per song. Yeah. Like, So now your song's costing you anywhere between... 500 plus per song you want to be any type of relevant you got to do a song a month that's 6k a year yep and i'm not going to put the price of the program here but oh. it's not that much and so yep. you 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 ryan are a great example yep. you put the money in you literally all the money you can you could probably tally it up in your own head if you have it share it but if you don't it's fine how much you've spent on beats mixing mastering recording time compared to what you just spent on this program it's probably comical yeah. right Totally. Totally. You got totally. a rough number. I mean, I'm trying to think, you know, um, it's like, look, man, and I've, I've done this too, where it's like, I do the buy five, you know, you know, buy three, get two free, you know, it's like, I've done all that, you know, but you're still, it's like, I've done that, you know, times. Time, yeah, like. And how much are those buy three, get two freeze? So it's, it all depends, right? Cause right. it's like, I've, I mean, this is the way, and I mean, look, I, I think some people are going to see it the way that I used to see it too, is the truth is, is like, I still have yet to hear, like, I've yet to hear a song that I've made when I bought like a $50 mm -hmm. wave lease. I ha I've yet to hear that beat released from another artist that I hear, like, actually come across like me like totally, I just totally. have yet to hear it so it's like i think there is that portion of it you, you could know? take that away but yeah. you still got the cap on streams 
A thousand percent. And you still need to go mix master it. A thousand percent. You still don't percent. own the rights and you got to split it with someone else. Uh, yes. And you know nothing about any of that stuff. And then you start getting into like long-term catalogs, like what is it that you own, not own, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, and it's just, so yeah, I mean, uh, trust me when I say like I have spent, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars like to try to get after this. And I mean, this, this go about is like, yeah, it's like, I, you know, I had some of the homie hookups, I had this and I had that, but it's still like the amount that I've ultimately spent versus what I spent on this program. Like, like it's, it's still just has made perfect sense to me, you know, hundred percent. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. Makes total sense. It, it's been incredible. Uh, dude, seeing your growth is crazy. And it was pretty fast. Yeah. I mean, that's why we call it rapid fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what what what's the date today? 23rd. So what month what week are we in? The ninth week? I want to say ninth week, yeah. All right. So what's the total uh you got a tally of the amount of beats you've made in nine weeks? Yeah, like I wanna say like it's either like twenty nine or thirty, you know, thirty beats. <laughs> Holy shit. Like twenty nine or thirty much, beats. Yeah, yeah. And like, these aren't just like, yeah, they're like, arranged. Yeah. They're not, they're not just like, you know, four bar loops no. ideas. It's like, yeah, they're all I'm fully like, arranged and ready to write. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and I mean, mixed I have, at all? all of them mixed. Um, I mean, we're talking like some EQ and some little bit, but nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. Not uh, that that matters. Cause the yeah. mixing happens later anyway. Yes. I mean, I went and listened when you had first sent your first pack of 14 yeah. yeah i went and listened yeah. to all all 14 of them yeah. and they were all mixed to me yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, exactly yeah, yeah. Are... volumes are right you know yeah the eqs yeah, are right so like everything's trash. yeah yeah um so we're at 30 beats in nine weeks yeah holy shit and, and it would have been more too you know it's like i had I some personal stuff happen with the pup but it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, even... i was on yeah i was on like a beat a day for a while you know? yeah no and but even then it's like the cool thing is you maybe look short term and you might say, you yeah. know, oh, it would have been more, but we look long term. It's like, it's going to be more, yeah. right? Because you have the skills forever. Absolutely. And we're at our song, uh, Eyes Closed. So where yeah. are we at with that song? So that is mixed um, and working on mastering it. Um, cool. At least for the first version. Um, and then, yeah, man, I actually just finished writing the second song, um, which I got to now record, uh, which is, a, which is a totally different vibe. It's a completely different vibe from no, eyes closed, which is, which is great. Uh, and I mean, no, I'm already, oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. and then I'm working on a third one too, where I have like the hook, I have the first verse and I'm working on the second verse. Um, so it is like, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking over here. Yeah. You're cooking. And for context, yeah. eyes closed, you yeah. made the beat. Yes. You wrote the lyrics, recorded yeah. vocals at your house. Yes. Mixed it and you're in the process of mastering. So when the song's finished, you will own the whole song. Yep. You made the whole beat. And nine weeks ago, you you still don't know any music theory, right? Just so we're all clear. Uh, no, nothing. Not, nothing not really. Yeah, not, yeah, not enough to be like... I know a little bit to kind of talk about some of the stuff and, you know, understand. I mean, now I understand like, okay, if I want to transpose something down, pitch shift it, it's like, all right, like yeah. I'm in this key and I want to go four down. Okay. I'm going to be in this key. Like I understand that, but I, other than that, no. Yeah. yeah. Which that's a five minute explanation on a yes. Zoom call with me. Right. Yes. It took me exactly. five minutes. To, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no music theory. Um, have you had to buy any other physical equipment? Um, I mean, I already had the majority of stuff other than, um, like, I mean, I had the interface, you know, um, I needed to buy a new microphone just because the, the mic now that I have, um, which is a shameless plug from my, uh, my sure. company, yeah, the Shore, yeah, SM7B, uh, which is perfect for if you are making some shit at your house it just picks up what's right in front of you. Yeah. So you can, I have get one too. you can have reflections, you can have stuff going on and it's still going to sound clean versus, you know, I even had a, a Neumann TLM one Oh three at one point, which is a good microphone, but it was, it pick up too much. You know, you got to have like a, you know, you got to put that in like a proper studio. So, yeah. So other than but you already had one, everything you yeah. had the and Computer. all you had, yep. Yeah. Say everything you got. 
Yeah. So I had the computer. I mean, I actually, you know, was able to set up monitors. I had the hard drive. I had the interface, the Apogee Duet um, headphones. I had these headphones. And so it was, yeah, like buying lot. I needed to buy logic um, as well as, you know, all of the, uh, the other plugins and software that you told us to buy. Yeah. So physical gear, uh, laptop, yep, laptop, headphones, interface, mic, um, external hard drive. You have monitors. Do you need monitors? No. Right. So, but you have, I have monitors too. Yeah. And, uh, I'm almost considering selling them. I almost yeah. never even turn them on. They well, just collect it, us. To like the only, the only reason why I actually pulled them out, uh, legitimately was because I had my buddy come over who I've been making some, I've been making some beats like for a project that I want to work on with him. Cool. And it's, uh, and it was just like, okay, I want you to be able to hear these at least decent. So I was like, fuck, let me pull out my monitors. And then I couldn't find the cords that I needed, but I was able to set it all up. So if he ever come, when he comes back, like we'll be able to actually listen to him, but that's really the only thing that I'm going to use it for, you know? Nice. Yeah. Okay. And then software. Yeah. I know we have to get a, a few pieces of software. Um, let's just say, including logic, like mm-hmm. what'd you spend on all the software? God, I mean, you know, uh, uh, logic I mean, splice arcade Cthulhu. Yeah. I mean, well, like arcade splice, both of those are, you know, 10 bucks a month. Cthulhu was what it was 40. like 40, 40. Yeah. And logic 200, um, waves, that, 25, waves a month. 25 a month. So yeah. So I, I ozone. Think, yeah. Ozone, which are is you, also, you do a monthly on that rent to own with yes, splice. So yeah, that's like 25. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's looking like, you know, probably around like, what is that, 70, 80 bucks a month of, you know, reoccurring for for music and then an initial investment of, you know, 260, something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. And if you've already got, think about if you already had logic, I mean, that cost just goes down. But for, I mean, a, a, a small, small, like, monthly payments of yeah. these software it's like it's so cool that these softwares have started doing that because yeah. when i started producing like six years ago which wasn't that long ago but there wasn't a lot of that kind of monthly stuff going on but now for like waves mixing plugins it's like dude 25 bucks a month for you know i mean stock plugins are cool but like why you could just pay 25 bucks you can't afford 25 yeah. bucks a month it's like music ain't your problem then homie you need to get a job obviously right totally yeah <laughs> so like yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, so overall your cost and then obviously the cost of the program, but like, again, it's all nominal, super small fees. People people don't start because they think it's too complicated and they also think that they need a lot of gear and oh, I need to get my studio. I talk to people on DMs all the time. I need to get my gear. I need to get my gear. I need to set up my studio. I'm like, you got a fucking key- computer and headphones? Straight up. Cool. Then, yeah, you might need a mic. Well, and that's and that's the whole thing, you know? It's like you watch these videos of, of like, I mean, fly-ass producers and, like, man, you guess, dude. They got, like, a vibey-ass space. They got a bunch of analog gear that sounds all sick when they're playing. Like, And it's like, dude, that is, that's great, you know? And it's like, yes, you can absolutely get there, but do you need all that in order to make music? No, no, you don't. Period. And, and proof of that too is, uh, cause the next argument logically from that would be like, well, those producers have made it. Yeah. They've made a living, you know, they're big and that's what it takes to make it that way. So if you want to make it that way, well, here's the truth. Russ, he's my favorite mm-hmm. example Yeah, is laptop logic pro nine. So we're on the 10 version. He was on the nine version. I mean, he had a mic. He had the same exact gear we just talked about. I don't even think he used Splice at the time. Yeah. He had Omnisphere for yeah. like making pianos, but he didn't do, they didn't have Splice in Arcade when he was making his big songs, losing control, yeah. what they want. He has a video yeah. of him showing how he made what they want and he used the keyboard on his computer. Yeah. He actually like played the, played random shit until he found something good. Yeah. And that I I don't know how many I think that song has half a billion streams, 500 Something million. Crazy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for everyone who says, "Oh, well, you need the big gear to make it." It's like, no, no. you actually don't. No. <laughs> to be honest with you. No, so. any, anything else like I'm now starting to think about like extra plugins and all this type of stuff. 
but it's all now just like, okay, I have a fundamental understanding of how to do this. So everything is just an add on at that, at, at this point, everything's just an add on to like make my creative process even more complete and more full and the ability to go in directions that like, like, cause yeah, man, when you buy other stuff, you can do other things, but it's just like, man, like you don't need all that at all no. to start. No, no, you don't. And, um, no, you don't. I mean, what would you say? Um, what would you say is like, um, the biggest, what would you say is the biggest benefit you got from going through rapid fire music Academy? Again, it's something that we've touched on and it's something that I continue to think about is it's just like now more than ever before, like whether it's my own music or like a beat that I make for someone else. Like that ability to just like, I have this, I now possess the skills. I mean, and it's just like anything I, I surf. It's like, I'm going to surf as long as I possibly can as a human, you know, until like my body breaks down and I can't do that anymore, you know? Um, and I'm going to keep my health up so that doesn't happen, you know? And it's just like, so it's just, it's like that, man, where it's just, I now possess these skills that like, to be able to sit down in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes later, but usually like 20 minutes later, I have put together something that I'm like, this is dope. Like, let's go, you know, nice. like that's, that's it right there. Like, that's it. That like, I will be able to do that forever. Um, what is that exactly that feeling? I mean, it is, it's that kid in the candy store. It's that like, it's that first time I heard mob deep shook ones, you know, like it, it is, it's, it's like, that's it, you know, like that is it. So. Yeah. It's incredible, dude. Yeah. It's that feeling, man. That's, that's awesome, dude. Well, Ryan, thanks a lot, man. I mean, appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to come just yeah. chop it up and yeah. do this. And thank you for all your hard work. You know, it, it, it helps me get feedback um, you've helped me with my, even my marketing material yeah. as you've seen me progress my messaging. I'm always like, Hey man, what do you think of this? Just to yeah. try to get more clients. You're always like, you know, put me on. Cause you're really the ideal client. Yeah. So I'm always asking. And now I know why it's because you're born yeah. November 10th. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to start saying, Hey, if you were born in the month of November uh, yeah. and if you're a Scorpio, yeah. and let's you're go. Upper, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, man, I, I, man, I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude. And um, yeah, just really appreciate you, bro. Thanks so much. Yeah, right on. And I will uh we'll be talking soon, man. Yep, sounds good, brother. All right, letters.